Hello, hello. Wave if you can hear me. We are on. We are live. Ten minutes late here to the four o'clock Eastern episode of On the Inside with James O'Keefe. We have a doozy for you today. Part one of a series of undercover investigations that we are doing into the swamp. Now, we're also doing some border work. We'll be getting to that shortly here. In fact, we'll probably start with the border uh, and then go to the, the piece, which is currently loading to X. Uh, for those of you listening, we have a 50% upload. It's a 20 minute long video. It's on the subject of blackmail, extortion, and voting. Something that Madison Cawthorn has told me about, that people think that he's a liar or that he's not credible, et cetera. Well, we have another source coming forward, perhaps unwittingly, hint, hint, talking about that. Very, I'm very excited about the series. And uh, in this series, I will uh, uh, save the best for last. So I, I, want, I hope that this encourages other people to come forward. I hope that it encourages other whistleblowers and insiders to, to be brave uh, and, and come forward, because a lot of people are coming forward. So, so we're going to get to that in a minute. Is it, is it already uploaded? It's on YouTube, DC Swamp Exposed Part 1. So we're going to go ahead and get this uh, uh, sent to, to you guys. You can find it on YouTube, DC Swamp Exposed Part 1. A Capitol Hill uh, staffer here has revealed how members of Congress are coerced to vote a certain way through blackmail and extortion after sex parties. <laughs> he talks about... Now, what's interesting is last night, Kerry Lake uh, was... Uh, revealed to have been bribed. So this is on a theme. So we're going to go ahead and let me just make sure this is uploaded. Bear with me one second. Get this to my audience here. And we have a couple guests that we're going to call on as we as we wait for this to finish uploading to Twitter. We have Andrew from muckraker.com, Nick Shirley, and a couple other folks in California who've exposed border issues that are standing by. I'm going ahead and uh, post this to my Telegram channel. First on the spaces, let me go to. Well, let me go to first. I'm going to go to Nick Shirley. Hey, Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Hey, Nick. I know we spoke last week. I. I, I think we're confirmed to go to the border together in Arizona. We're just waiting for this piece to finish uploading to Twitter. Excuse me, X. It should be uploaded any minute. Um, just I want to spend a few minutes. You 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 just followed up with the cartel in was it Arizona? Where were you? In Texas. In okay. Texas. Could just tell tell yeah, the world Texas. just for a minute or two what you exposed with with the cartel because that's pretty ballsy. Yeah. So I was down in Texas um, last weekend and. I went down there and I was doing a video on the crisis that's going on at the border. And as I was going around talking to people, one guy told me he used to work for the cartel. And I asked him, well, will you take me to some of your spots? He said, yeah, well, it's going to cost you a little bit. And so I, I, I bribed him essentially. And uh, he got in the car. With you said me you bribed I, him? What do you mean? Um, he said, well, it's going to cost you. So I said, well, what do you want? Do you want me to pay for your lunch? Or, or well, I didn't really want to offer any money, right? So I was like, I'll pay for your lunch. And he's like, yeah, that, we'll do that. <laughs> and how did you know this guy was with the cartel? Yeah, so I, I was going around at, talking to people and uh, I asked people if they knew where people were coming across. And I asked him and he said, well, these are my secrets. Hmm. And then when, as I got to the car, he's like, well, you need to blur out my face because the cartel knows knows me and they, they're looking for me. Uh, and, and you posted that video t on X? On YouTube. On YouTube. Well, we're going back to the to the border, uh, uh, Nick, here soon in Arizona. We have hundreds of sources that have reached out to us. Um, maybe we ought to track down the chairman of the Arizona uh, Republican Party who was on ca uh, tape yesterday with Kerry Lake. That would be a person. If anybody knows the whereabouts, by the way, of the chairman of the Arizona Republican Party and where they are located, please DM me or send me a signal message because I'd like to confront that man and ask him a few questions. And we, that would be amazing. People like to send me, you guys sent me the whereabouts where Mark Cuban works out. Uh, Nick, anything else you want to say about your your work? You're a very brave guy. You, you ran into the uh, uh, hotel in New York wearing a reflecting vest, and now you've spoken with the cartel. 
Um, what's yeah. <laughs> what's next for Nick Shirley? <laughs> What's next? Well, me and you are going down to Arizona, so that's going to be absolutely crazy. I don't want to tell the world which dates, but you know, I know we've confirmed it. So I'll see you. I'll see you then. So st yes. stand, hang around, Nick. I might get back, come back to you, but I want to. We're finishing up the video uploading, and we're going to take you through the first three minutes of this DC Swamp exposed blackmail video. People are asking, did he name names? Um, he named a couple names. The challenge as a journalist, from talking here. I can't, you know, some some people he would not name. He refused to. Um, but I have to verify. If he's going to name somebody, I, I'm not just going to put their name on blast. I will name him. I'm the, the guy and the kid in the video I've recorded, and he's on blast. He will be publicly known, and you'll see his face in a minute. Um, people are asking about names. The way this works is that we release a little bit, and more comes out. Uh, let's go to Andrew from muckraker.com. Andrew, are you there? Hey, yeah, Anthony here. How's it going? Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Um, yes, sir. It, it sounds like you're in a car. Uh, you and I are always in cars. We're always on the go. Where are you today? Uh, right now, I'm up north, northern, northeastern United States right now. Northeast United States. And, and I had a chance to spend some time with you. You went down to South America. You're the only person that I know who traveled all the way from South America on the buses, on the trains, all the way up to the the border in Brownsville. And you documented every part of it. And people may not know this, but Anthony here was temporarily kidnapped by the cartel. Can you just tell everyone what happened to you when you were kidnapped by the cartel? Tell the world what, what that experience was like. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, to make a long story short, you know, my brother and I went from Quito, Ecuador, all the way to the United States border. And the reason why, we, and that included going through the Darien Gap and, you know, getting smuggled into Mexico by who I believe was the Sinaloa cartel, riding the train of death and a lot more. And the reason why we started in Quito is because that's where the whole world is flying into, because they have the world's easiest entry requirements. But anyway, at the end of this trip, we were going to cross into the United States right across the river from Elon Musk's SpaceX. That's in Boca Chica, Texas was the uh, destination. It's right there in the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a long story, but basically what happened was we got picked up by a, uh, a, a truck that was actually at Texas Plates, interestingly enough, but this was on the Mexican side. We got picked up by this truck. And they essentially tell us, you guys can't keep walking down this beach. It's gonna be trouble for you if you keep walking down there. We were walking to where the Rio spits out to the Gulf of Mexico. And um, like I said, this truck stops us is like, you know, it's going to be trouble if you keep walking down the beach, get in the truck with us. And so we get in the truck, they drive us back down uh, to where we had started walking up this beach and we get handed off. They pull up next to another pickup truck and three armed men get out. And they're like, yeah, you guys, like they order us out. This is in Spanish, of course. And they order us out of one truck into another truck with these three armed men. They're screaming at us. This is my brother and I just to, you know, make sure we're on the same page. And, um, then we're driven out like 10 minutes inland and they take all of our, they take our bags and they unload everything and they see my drone and they see my camera and they start flipping out and they think that we're spying on them. They, they have no idea what's going on. Uh, they immediately check us for wires. They put us on our knees. They take like these hostage type photos of us. Um, but they got my brother pinned up against the truck. At one point, one of these guys points to my drone and then takes a pistol and holds it to his head as if it's like a death threat. And um, then they proceed to tie up our hands and uh, they blindfold me. They didn't have one for my brother. So they kind of like pulled his jacket out over his head and throw him into the back of a car, into the back of a pickup truck. And um, so we were with three armed men now, totally tied up. We have no way to get to the outside world because, you know, they've taken our electronics and everything. And now we're just driving into Mexico. Now, 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 now Anthony, here. did you get this on camera or recorded this cartel kidnapping situation? I had recorded the first part when they, so when we got originally detained before we were tied up, before they realized that they had, or that we had a drone and a camera, what we were actually up to. Um, I had filmed them on my phone thinking that, hey, you know, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to have some more footage. How, how did you film them on your phone? Did you, were you just surreptitiously recording or how did that work? No, no, no. I was, so I was sitting in the back. And so in the back seat, it was myself, so like for order from left to right, myself, my brother, an armed man. And then in the front, there's two armed men. Guys, and hold so on one second. I'm just, uh, dude, we're on live radio slash streaming. So if you're just tuning in here to the, on the inside with James O'Keefe, we're on the line with, uh, Mr. Muckraker, he uses the word muckraker. No one else I know uses that word. It's the title of my third book, American Muckraker. And he's describing, this is a brave, what are you, 26, Anthony? 
Yes, yes. Incredibly brave guy. I had a chance to spend some time with him. Actually, is the only journalist I know and, and citizen journalist to have documented the entire interaction from South America to the United States. And we're going to finish talking to Anthony here for another few minutes. Anthony, stand the line, too, because I want to come back to you if you, if you have time. Uh, sure. And then we're going to go to the D.C. Blackmail Expose, which is now live on X. D.C. Swamp Exposed Part 1, Capitol Hill individual reveals how, voter, how members of Congress are coerced to vote a certain way through sex parties. We're going to get to that in about five minutes. Um, so back to you. Uh, you're, in, you're kidnapped by the cartel. And did they have guns? Were they pointing them at you? How, tell what happened? Oh yeah, they, they, these men, these men, they had uh, assault rifles, and they had uh, most of them had pistols at their hip. Um, I mean, serious dudes. This, this was the Gulf Cartel. That that's where they that's where they operate. If you, anybody wants to pull like a cartel uh, map of Mexico, like a territorial map, you could see where they operate. It's where we picked up right there in uh, Matamoros. Did you think uh, that you were going to die? I mean, how what was going through your mind? I mean, I was trying not to think that, but I was whispering to my brother in the back of the car. And when I was doing this, they were they were telling us basically, like, shut up, don't talk to each other. But I was whispering to my brother. I was like, I'm sorry, dude. You know, I'm, you know I don't know what's going to happen. You told your brother um, that you're sorry because you didn't want him to get in the situation. Well, I felt directly responsible because I'm his older brother. He came along with me. He's four years younger than me. And I felt responsible for getting us freaking, you know, picked up by these people. Um, you know, that was my failed leadership that got us into that position, unfortunately. So, and I'll admit that. Um, but you know, anyway, what happened was we end up, they, they're driving all up and down. I kept asking them as we're driving and I'm blindfolded. My brother's got the hood over his head. Um, I, I'm asking them, I'm like, what's going like, I, I'm, I'm asking what's going on and I'm telling them, I'll just pay them whatever money they want. Let's go to a bank right now. I'll pay you. We'll end this. And they just keep saying, no, they say you're part of like El or Un Investigacion and we're going to see El Jefe. Periodista Investigacion, investigative reporter. No, no, no. They're saying that we're part of an investigation. And they're oh, not I letting see. us go until they finish their investigation. I see. And so th I don't know if they ever realized that I was a journalist or what I was up to. But I kept telling them I was just a photographer. And, uh, you know, we're driving down these dirt roads. People are walking up. They make these stops. People walk up to the car. They're whispering about us. And, um, you know, it's not looking good. They're not telling us anything. And, uh, you know, this goes on for over an hour. We're just driving, making stops. They're hotboxing the car, smoking pot in the car. You know, talking over, they all talk. They have these giant walkie talkies that they used to talk. Uh, they don't really use cell phones. And um, then we the, eventually the door, the car stops, the doors open up, and they take off the blindfold. They order us out of the car, and we're in the middle of an empty field. And I'm thinking, this is that, they that's when, like, the Why movie, the, uh, the Martin Scorsese movies. Yeah, exactly. Where they hand you a shovel, they tell you to start digging. Well, Andrew, we've only got about. I want to come back to you. This is I, I, we have breaking news with this DC blackmail story, which is now published on X. It's going viral as I speak. Um, I want to come back to you here, Andrew. Can you can you just even if you want to come back in about an hour, you can hang out, and uh, I'd like to come back to you. But we got breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. DC blackmail exposed. DC swamp exposed. Part one. This is an, a breaking story, an ongoing series of videotapes, and as always, I save the best for last, but we got to start somewhere. And this one, guys, I actually went undercover myself. That's right. I spray-painted my hair. I put on a light disguise. It's in, insane that this guy did not recognize me. Uh, I'm getting DMs from people in D.C. right now. I want to do the same thing. You can do that. Um, so let's go ahead and play this tape, everyone. I'm going to play it off my I iPad on the air. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and play the first uh, few minutes of this tape. This is Titus Warren on Capitol Hill. He actually worked for the um, uh, some type of congressional committee over the summer. He's currently been offered a program in, in the executive office of the White House CHIPS program. I've never even heard of that before. Uh, this is Titus Warren, a young little staffer on Capitol Hill. Let's go to the videotape. You're not a Trump fan, are you? No. Donald needs to die. Donald needs to die, says says Titus Warren. Donald needs to die. Um, this comes a day after Trump won the New Hampshire primary. A lot of people concerned about Trump being assassinated. Horrible thing to even say, but he's saying it, and I think people need to hear it. Donald needs to die. Huh? I said, well, then Donald needs to go. Majority of the work that I do is policy because that's what my degree is in. Policy. So, it's focused in policy. 
And so I do a lot of, that's why I go to a lot of embassies and a lot of events at the White House. It sounds, you were the White House? Talking about visiting embassies, going to the White House, friendly with Nancy Pelosi. Um, and by the way, if uh, we have George Santos joining us at 5 Eastern time on this program. And feel free to ask to comment whenever you like, and I can add people as speakers. If you have any information about this blackmail extortion business, I will just put you on the show right now. But we're going to spend the next 15 minutes going through this video, and I'm going to ask you guys what you think. Here we go. Titus Warren talking about going to the White House. I'm just the White House. Do you, do you have to keep your mouth kind of shut because you're working for a Republican? You can't say. Well, I don't. Again, I really keep it to myself. So you like besties with Andy? So this guy works has worked, works for Republicans, but he has to keep his mouth shut because he can't say what he actually thinks, which is Donald needs to die. Maybe this is why the Republicans suck so much. They have people like this working for them. Pelosi. I love Nancy. It's my picture of Nancy Pelosi and I is on my desk. I don't know if your constituents would want to know that though, huh? Would they be pissed they off? They, they, they don't care. If they do, they kiss the crack of my ass. There's a lot of things. If they, they can kick the, they can kiss the crack of my ass, <laughs> says Titus Warren. There's a lot of things I do here and a lot of things that I see with my own eyes. Uh, that I do hear, and there's a lot of things that I see with my own eyes. Madison Cawthorn wasn't lying either. That is then he says that Madison Cawthorn wasn't lying. Madison Cawthorn wasn't lying. Someone said in the comments that I need to be better with my studio here. I need to hire more people to be in my studio. Well, listen, I have all these people out there in the field getting video, and that's where I want to spend the money, not in the studio. I'm not in my studio. I'm on the I'm on, I'm on the road. Uh, so so we're, we've put our resources where it counts, which is recording these people. Titus says Madison Cawthorn not lying about the blackmail. Wheelchair that the video that came out with the guy who was sitting off the building in the hearing room. Oh yes, I, I saw that. Okay. Yeah. The guy was blackmailed. He was blackmailed. Pretty much. Whoa. So most members. They actually have spouses that are married. They have affairs with other council people. So Titus says that the sex party, or rather the sex tape that came out recently, the gay sex tape, um, that guy was blackmailed because that information existed for a while, this is what Titus is saying. Congress people, Congress members, getting all stuff. And they have like parties and stuff. And they have like, sex parties. Yeah, they. Whoa. Wants to talk a lot. So these parties are like, it gets hot and heavy. Now, if you're listening over X, I'm playing a video of Titus. It's a hidden camera video. I'm not going to tell you where the hidden camera was. Mark Cuban asked me, where's your camera? Why didn't you? And people say, why don't you tell them where your camera is? Well, because they might confiscate it and destroy it. We don't want that to happen because it's my word against theirs. Uh, but I had multiple hidden cameras running. This is now me undercover, not anybody else but me. Titus does not know he's talking to James O'Keefe. Yeah, it's like an in-house thing. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But now that it's not, everybody in there knows. But they actually, that is a fact. That is a fact. They actually do have these parties, says Titus. They do have these parties. Does that happen a lot? Like people ah! do something sexual and they blackmail? Ah. Have you seen that? So, it happens... Every now and then. Wait, but they get blackmailed. Exactly. Oh, right. Holy shit. Because it's, it's like that they have a leverage. Of, it's like, like they have, have leverage if you have something called like leverage. It's called leverage. And so what they do, they oh. use. To get something. They use it against you to get something else. And then he goes to talk about voting. Now, majority of the members that come wait, I'm always, not at your time, come voting. A lot of the members I've seen come in late and are, are nine out of ten times hung over from the night before from these sex parties. From the sex party. So, on the voting, you already have a piece of paper that tells you how to vote. Known as a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion. It's, it's not a suggestion. Uh, uh, telling you to, uh, what they give you these pieces of paper with the voting on it. No, no, that's what you must do because there's leverage against you. What we need you to do because we know how we have information about you. Right. They have a, a group chat that they tell people how to vote. They tell people how to vote. They tell you how to vote. It's not your choice. It's not a democracy. It's something that 
you must do, otherwise we're going to release the blackmail sex tapes. And they get information about them and use it as, as uh, blackmail. In a way, yes. Well, I mean, I've never so now we reached out to Madison Cawthorn, who I don't think Madison is able to join us. He was supposed to join us uh, now. And this is a 20 minute long video. I'm just gonna play some, a little bit more of this, but um, I was gonna get on, but this is Madison's reaction. I recorded this yesterday, talking about a reaction to this, uh, him talking about Madison Cawthorn and this sex tape. In a way, yes. Well, I mean, I've never been to a, a party like this. I've been invited to them. My instant reaction to that is, you know, especially the blackmail piece that it seemed like the uh, this individual was talking about in this piece. Um, you know, that's something that I experienced firsthand. You know, it doesn't something that he experienced firsthand, but never been to the party. Madison Cawthorn invited to the party. This young gentleman, Titus Warren, not invited, but around people who have been make you feel like guilty sometimes. I uh, get my check and I'm good. I, I, asked, I asked Titus, doesn't it make you feel guilty that you're working for Republicans, uh, working for Republican Congressional? I think he worked for the, uh, was it the Energy Committee uh, over the summer and most recently as well. I said, does that make you feel guilty? And he says, I just want the money. At least he's honest. That money, um, yeah. uh, well, that's what it's all like about. I like to yeah. buy nice things, he says. So I say, what type of nice things do you like to buy? You like to buy nice things? So you get that money, you like to buy what type of nice things you like to buy? I love a Louis Vuitton. He loves Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Maybe we could get someone on who's an expert in Louis Vuitton. So the one thing I want is a, is a duffel bag. He wants a like duffel, duffel bag. Like so what did I do? We go shopping. I go shopping. There, I'm looking at a video of me shopping with him. We go to DC uh, City Center there. That's us in the Burberry store. Man, the things I do. Um, democracy, is it a myth? Democ is it a myth? People say this is a low-level staffer. You say that because we've got high-level staffers too. We're saving, we're, we're, we're building towards it, everyone, okay? This is about bringing out sources. This is about people coming out and exposing this crap. This is me shopping with, with, the, with the staffer, with the individual. And uh, that's me with my hair spray painted here. Um, this is him talking about this program that he's being invited to. CHIPS, it's called. We, I've never heard of this. CHIPS. It's some type of, we found the guy's payroll certification documents to the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Natural Resources where he worked. Um, we're trying to find out which particular office he's currently with. This is the executive order on the implementation of CHIPS Act of 2022. Titus Warren talking to me over the phone about just invited into that program this week. Did you say that CHIPS was again? Like, what does that mean? So... CHIPS is inside the Commerce Building. So CHIPS is a, um, is a program offered to the White House Executive Office. It's an internship program um, where you, uh, it's pretty much the CHIPS Act. This is what it came from. It was to provide broadband and uh, resources for the um, for rural community. Although Titus is just an entry and very low-level person on Capitol Hill, he's been to the White House, spent time with the leaders of both political parties, witnessed and heard a lot of congressional staff doing and saying things. What he has heard and seen, we believe people need to hear. We also believe it will encourage other interns, bartenders, contractors, and members of political parties, anybody who is on the inside, come forward with more information. All right, so this is a 15-minute long video. We can play some other parts of it, but um, we're waiting for Mr. Santos to come on to talk about this. Uh, Titus did mention George Santos. Uh, I guess we got, we got Jordan Conrad. And Jordan, are you there? I think you're muted, Jordan. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Jay? Yeah. What's your reaction to this? We, we've been you and I have been talking about the border. Uh, you wrote up an article about this video. What's your reaction to what this guy is saying? Yeah, you know, I thought it was, I mean, it was, it was, it's a known secret. It's an open secret, um, which I thought was funny because when Madison Cawthorn came out and said that, he was targeted by the establishment and the Uniparty. And then 
you know, what, what this guy Titus, he actually mentioned in here is that they'll use this leverage against you during the campaign and during election season. You know, as, as we saw with these um, photos of Madison Cawthorn supposedly cross-dressing, I mean, I thought they were kind of funny. I, um, he, he was wearing bra. I, I think it was a joke. He's a young guy, you know, that doesn't seem too out of the norm for someone in college or someone in their 20s to mess around like that. But they used that against him. The entire swamp came after him and basically tried to influence his election as much as possible. And they, they got him out so that they could silence him. So I thought that was very interesting. But in regards to George Santos, I honestly, I think he might have mentioned him like by mistake because it didn't really make sense how right. he went into... Oh, before George Santos left, I, I think he might have been talking about Madison Cawthorn. Right. But, uh, you know, but with the, Jordan, guy, he also he also yeah. mentions his Senate Democrat staffer caught the gay sex tape, and he says yeah. that 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 they had that for a while. Did you do any reporting on that gay sex tape, or knowing anything about how it was sort of existed out there and it was held on to? Yes, we we did report on it at the Gateway Pundit, but this is the first I'm learning about it that they had it for a while. And, uh, I, I would assume they were using it to leverage against either the staffer to get him to talk to media or something like that, or they were using it against um, the congressman, telling him, hey, if you don't vote a certain way, or the, the senator, if you don't vote a certain way, we're going to put this sex tape out of your staffer. And that was that was Senator yeah. Ben Cardin of Maryland firing this guy, Aiden, I can't pronounce his last name, Mays Sorovsky. To or something like that, yes. And the other thing, you know, Jordan, is this this guy, yeah. Titus Warren, tells me on a phone call, I recorded the phone call, it's legal to record in Washington, D.C., by the way, that's the other yes. thing in O'Keefe Masterclass, Maryland not legal, D.C. legal. And listen to what Titus says here, for all of you tuning in to Spaces here, thank you all for being with us, we have 7,000 people live on Spaces every Wednesday, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock Eastern Time, we're on the phone with Jordan Conradson, him and I... And the OMG team reporting on Titus Warren, Capitol Hill, young man who's unwitting whistleblower talking about gay sex tapes, sex parties, Capitol, Capitol Hill staffers cheating. It's, I don't know if it's some type of eyes wide shut dynamic, but they're going to parties and, they, and the couples sleep with other couples and then they use that as leverage. And I'm going to play this audio recording, just released, brand new tape, came out 30 minutes ago, O'Keefe Media Group, myself being the undercover reporter. I've actually um, never actually done a, the, one of these so-called so guy-to-guy date meeting recordings, but I did it myself. And why did I do that? I did that because I want to inspire you guys to go do it yourselves. Because if, if I can do it, if James O'Keefe can go to D.C. and meet with Capitol Hill staff, man... Anybody can do it. Let's listen to Titus Warren talk about more about these sex tapes. Here we go. Titus dove into more detail on the sex parties. He told us if he were to name the person, it would put them in grave jeopardy, and he would take that information to the grave. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll tell you what I heard, but I won't tell you who I heard it from because I'm not putting the person in jeopardy. I'll tell you what I heard, but I won't tell you who I heard it from. This guy really has doesn't want to name the individuals he's afraid for that person's life. But what I did hear is a lot of, a lot of um, people, you know, get brought, like couples, come in, and they have sex parties, and then they have sex parties with other couples, and then they end up in the hospital, and then they end up in the hospital, and then they end up in the hospital, and it's a whole big ordeal. Um, men, and, men and women and women, it's a deal, couples going in there. Alcohol is a part of... We got to get into these sex parties. Maybe I already did get into them. Maybe I'm just holding that footage, all right? We're, we're building the case, everyone. We're building the case. I don't care if you're an intern, janitor, you're the cleaning lady, you're the president. I don't care who you are. I want the evidence. We, get, we have sources everywhere, eyes and ears everywhere. But we're going to get into these D.C. sex parties. I can tell you that right now. It's just, this is quite demonic, especially... The day after the Carrie Lake bribe recording came out. But furthermore, if it's cocaine related, no. I've not heard of a drug substance besides alcohol. By the way, we would ask you all, please repost the space. If you're listening on X, go to my X account. 
We want to get more people. Just go ahead and repost the space. We're live right now talking about the DC sex parties, blackmail, and hidden camera recording. Uh, go ahead and repost that. Um, I want to get to a few more people. I want to call on people for going to George Santos, getting his reaction to this. But let's play the rest of this. That is at the heart. Now, that's why I've seen that. I've not heard of cocaine. And it's personally, a person I'm not going to tell you that there is cocaine, but they, they're about to lose their job. They could tell you what you do with hair. That it's couples and couples. Couples and couples. Women and women, women, and women, and women men and men. But who told me that? I will not say. He wouldn't tell me. He wouldn't, this guy would not tell me who told him that, but witnessed it in his work. Uh, back to you, Jordan, your reaction to that. Yeah, you know, clearly he just wants to keep his job and keep buying his Louis Vuitton, his Chanel. You know, he, I, I heard he's saving up for a weekend in the Hamptons every single weekend of next summer. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think he just doesn't want to, face any more consequences than he's likely already going to face for totally exposing this scheme. But um, I think it's funny, you know, if, if the American people knew what kind of debauchery goes on in Congress, uh, none of these people would still be there. Unbelievable. Um, and if you're listening, guys, uh, request to speak. We're going to call on some people. We have about 20 minutes before Santos joins us. Uh, let's go to some callers on my team. Who do we have in the queue that wants to speak. Um, let's see who we have. Uh, we got Nick, Nick Red Cloud. What's your reaction to this? Unmute yourself. Hey, James. How you doing? Well, I think one of my biggest reactions is, we see this all the time, is how cheap these people will, uh, will they'll sell themselves, right? This guy wants a Louis Vuitton bag and he's around all this corruption. Um, and you see stuff like that all the time. It's like a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there. So I'm just surprised how cheap people sell their souls. Right, he does seem to be, I mean, he, you know, he, he was a very kind of affable young man. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't say he was unlikable, but you're right, it, it was the moral depravity of it. Because I asked him, don't, don't you, do, you, do you know that, that, you know, do you feel guilty? I'll go back to that part again because I think it's very revealing because this is live radio, so people come and they go. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this one bit here. <laughs> I like to buy nice things. I like to buy nice things. You like, you like to buy nice things? So you get that money, you like to buy what type of nice things you like to buy? I love a Louis. I love a Louis. I love a Louis. Like you're referring to Louis, Louis Vuitton there. The moral depravity of these people. These are not dumb people. Obviously smart enough to be invited to an internship program at the White House. By the way, more on that coming soon. It's like Woodward and Bernstein, all the president's men. We're, we're following the scent. Ashley St. Clair knows what I'm talking about, right, Ashley? We, we started at the airport, an, an American Airlines worker tugged in my sleet shirt, and suddenly I'm at the border with like the cartel and elitas. That's what you do as a reporter, you follow the scent. Um, let's see, duffel bags. I like a lot. That's it. I like a lot of things. I am so confident in my masculinity, ladies and gentlemen, that I had to do this for you. Okay. Not gay, but uh, took one for the team. Just kidding. I had a big disguise on, spray painted the hair, put the vest on, doing what I have to do to get the story. Who else do we have on the program who wants to speak, react to this? Do we have anyone, team, queued up? Uh, I had no idea how he didn't know who you were. I mean, that's kind of the most remarkable part of it to me. It, well, yeah, talk to me about that. Why didn't, what, what's going on there? Is it a psychological thing? What's going on? With him not knowing who you were? Yeah, what is your read? I mean, you know, this whole thing, it's kind of like Snowden with the NSA, right? Like, we all knew they were spying on us, maybe not the specifics. Like, we all know that they're corrupt and compromised in D.C. Well, maybe not all of them, many of them. Um, and I think th there will be more information coming out as to the specifics 
and and how deep this this goes but but i'm amazed how mainstream the information is and that that you're here in a space like this and, and by the way i want to say uh, you're amazing i've been following your work for a long time my profile picture on facebook in 2009 was you in that pimp jacket when you exposed uh, <laughs> acorn and so it, it's amazing that he didn't know who you were i mean i can't believe it I mean, you know, what, what what do you think about the disguise? Do you think that the disguise was made me look not like me? Or were you like, it, oh, that's James O'Keefe? It was as good as Clark Kent's disguise, right? <laughs> so does that mean that it was strong or it wasn't strong of a disguise? I mean, it looked just like you. But, I mean, uh, again, I'm – so, you, you know, you're – you're a celebrity in like I guess conservative circles, like policy circles. I, I don't think that a lot of the lefties know who you are, it's, so I think that's what it is. They're kind of stuck in their. Echo it's like chamber. echo chamber prevents people, but you know my, my view is a little different. Uh, and what is your name, sir? Who am I speaking with? Is it Viva? Viva? Yes, sir. Okay, Viva. So um, my view is that it almost seemed like he was confessing and not really even focusing on who he was talking to. And by the way, that's very common with these with these lunch and dinner meetings. They don't really even pay attention. They never really ask questions of me or the people I work with. It's almost like a form of therapy. I don't know if you, you, you got that sense listening to this tape. Yeah, I think you're on to something there. I mean, like you said, these people don't seem to be uniquely evil, um, the people around these circles of power. They're not so thoroughly compromised that they're at that state yet of complete depravity. So, yeah, you know, confession does good for the soul. And I think a lot of these people, if you get them one on one, they would let you, you know similar things. Very good, Viva. Do we have anyone else? We still got about 13 minutes until Santos joins us. For those of you joining us, we're live with the DC part one, Swamp Exposed, covering the blackmail, the leverage in voting, featuring a young man named Titus Warren confessing all the dirty secrets of the nation's capital as he's worked for Republicans. He's been offered this program through CHIPS. We've reached out to CHIPS. We have not heard back. Um, I, I doubt the Biden White House would return my calls. Uh, we, 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 you know, we've gotten the congressional document showing he was, in fact, a paid staffer on Cap paid on Capitol Hill, worked for a Congre Energy Committee, in fact. Who else do we have queued up here? We want some reactions. How about... Diligent, hey, diligent <clears throat> denizen. You're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Thank you, James. Great work as usual. Uh, I actually have more of a question. Did he allude to who was responsible for hosting these parties or applying this type of leverage onto the Congress? Yeah. Well, one 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 thing he would not do is he said, "I'm going to take it to the grave." He said, "I'll take this to the grave. I will not." I tried to get the name of the source there in the recording and you can hear him say take I'm taking it to the grave because that you know that that person would, would put that person's life in jeopardy. Now many of you saying James why are you putting this guy in blast, right? Aren't you putting this young man in jeopardy? I say the public has a right to know. And in a country which values the first amendment and the public's right to know, we we have to put this information out there. Period if people's votes are being compromised because of sex parties. The, the value of the public knowing that information exceeds whatever marginal risk or harm done. The goal is not to harm people. The goal is the information being getting out, period. And I know and you know that more people will come out as a result of this. Good question, though. Any other questions before we move on to the next person? Yeah, I just, I mean, well, it's a comment, really. I think it highlights the the broader problem of the corruption that's residing in Washington, D.C., right? There's an element that is coercing our representation into voting the way that they want to vote and not representing the people. So I think this is definitely needed, and I think you should do more of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a couple more people queued up here. This is great. Good work, guys. Um Let's go to Laura. Laura, you're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Your reaction to this blackmail story. I first want to say thank you. As always, wonderful work. I appreciate it. My reaction is bravo. What is appealing or confusing or my question is, 
it, it amazes me that when you put somebody on the inside, they awfully, they jab away, they, they, they talk, they jib jab constantly, but the Americans are, are in the dark. So it's like a big secret unless inside your club. And I, I, it floors me how it doesn't bother them that we're being so misled and lied about and, and people are suffering over from their lies. I'm thinking of your Pfizer tape or Kerry Lake or just now what you exposed. It's like this hidden secret. They all just laugh away. They blab away, uh, you know, to on the inside uh, parties, and yet the rest of the country and world suffer. Well, and the, I, I'm just the, wondering what you think about that. Well, thank you. Um, let me let me let me play the tape again. We're live. We got people hopping off and joining. We got 7,200 people live. This guy says he loves Nancy Pelosi. He says Nancy Pelosi. I got a picture of Nancy Pelosi on my desk as he works for a Republican member of Congress. Let's listen to this. And you're working for a Republican. I don't know if your constituents would want to know that, though, huh? What? Would they be pissed they off? They, they, don't they don't care. If they do, they kiss the crack of my ass. My constituents can, quote, kick, kiss the crack of my ass. So you might say, well, why, you know, what's going on? There's, there's, there's this moral depravity in, in our country, and... Um, there's this sort of nihilism on full display. Money, Louis Vuitton bags, they can kiss my ass. I won't disclose the source. Now, the truth be told, if he were to start naming names, and there's a couple, couple names here, everyone, that I, I, as a reporter, have to corroborate that before I put people on blast. Um, if they want to come on camera with me, they're welcome to. If they want to come undercover on a camera with me, they're welcome to. But I have to verify before I put a, somebody else's name on blast. Let's go to Sean Campbell. Uh, unmute yourself, sir. Hey, can you guys hear me? I'm, I'm on the border in my vehicle. So What's your reaction to this latest expose and any thoughts, comments, um, questions you have? Yeah, man, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of new to it. I'm trying to catch up because I've been out here on the border all day long. Uh, I, I don't, it's not unexpected from what I've seen um, working for a former former think tank, for sure. I mean, I, I think that's something that uh, needs to continue to be investigated, James. Did you say, Sean, work. you worked in D.C. for a former... Which think tank did you work for? I used to work for Arsenal Media Group back in 2022. Have you seen anything like this in D.C. with these with this I, leverage and blackmail? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I used to... Like, there used to be Republicans who would, like, literally, like, put towels and stuff underneath their door smoke pot, do lines of cocaine, and then go on Twitter and blast about the war on drugs. So, I mean, it's... Have you it's, seen, it's, when they, you said they did cocaine behind the door, have you ever seen that or just heard about it? No, I've seen them do it. I've seen, I've seen people in politics in the Republican Party, people who are in Congress right now do lines of cocaine and smoke pot, while they then go on and blast the war on drugs. Are you willing to name anyone? Uh, you and I can talk later. Okay. That might be interesting. See, see, we got a guy right here. I bet a lot of people listening in America don't know that. And it's, they do cocaine, okay. But then they go out and they, did you say that they advocate policies against that? Yeah, they're, then they'll, you know, they're, they're against the war. They'll, they'll say, hey, you know, we should obviously decriminalize this, decriminalize that as far as drugs are concerned. They're very anti-drug when it comes to their public, um, their, their public, you know, who they are as a public figure. But then behind closed doors, you know, they're doing stuff that's completely different. I mean, th 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 this is just, just evil. I mean, that it's it's a it's a logical contradiction. I mean, you do one thing, say another. All right, let's see. Uh, anything else, jo uh, Anything else, Sean? Before I go back to Jordan. Yeah, just James. I'm going to be going to, to Tucson to investigate some of the stuff we talked about. I don't really want to like be too open with yep. it. I'm going to be looking at Catholic charities in the next week or so. So uh, yeah, well, you and I are going to well, see each other in Tucson. Let's go back to Grant Cardone. Grant, I was just with you in Miami on Monday. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can. Well, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, or really anything. You and I had a great conversation. Maybe first, tell you know what was your reaction to us talking together on Monday? What was your reaction Should to meeting me? You know, I, I enjoyed being with you. I, I enjoyed the work that you're doing. And, um, you know, I think it's very, very important that, that Americans get told the truth, and that will never happen 
uh, the way things are today without guys like you out doing what you do. Well, I, I think I, you gave me a lot to think about with the, the economics of journalism, and 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 really, I think what I took away from our conversation is, in terms of, of you need money. Of course, that money doesn't motivate me. I'm I, the story motivates me, as as you as we both said to each other. But I get it. You know, you got You got to get the money in the door so you can pay the bills and. Uh, I given that a lot of thought, actually, and um, I, I think it would actually make your audience more rabid supporters if they were funding the projects you're doing, and they would become more invested, and then have more. They, they would actually share it more, uh, make sure their families know about it more. Mm-hmm. They would be more invested in putting wood on the fire. Yeah, well, we have 7,200 live listeners. How how do you suggest I go about doing that? I don't have any open. I don't have any secrets. I'm happy to share yeah, with everyone. I, you would be like every time you did this. Hey guys, look, I'm breaking stories every day. But look, you know how hard it is to live. Uh, most journalists are are, are are basically living for this. They're not financially motivated. However, it takes finances. And every time you come on here, I'd be like, hey, go to. Uh, your website, uh, O'KeefeMedia.com, and, and support me. Support me with ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Everyone, if you're listening to this program and you like the fact that we're taking hidden cameras to the nation's capital and recording swamp creatures talking about buying Louis Vuitton bags, how much they want Trump to die, and talking about sexy blackmail parties to leverage votes, if you think that's important to expose, then the seven thousand people listening to this, just on X and all the other hundreds of thousands. Go to my website, O'Keefe Media Group. That's my name, O-K-E-E-F-E, mediagroup.com, and donate $10 so that I don't have to have anybody tell me what not to do or what to do. And if you really want a tax deduction, we also have a new 501c3 called Citizen Journalism Foundation. That information is on our website. If you're donating a lot of money, you can do it through a nonprofit. But just give us some money. Help us make payroll. Help us hire more people. This is important work. It's extremely expensive and high risk. I get sued all the time, sometimes raided by the feds. But um, you know, I'm, I'm honestly getting to a point in my life where I'm not afraid to die, and I really don't care what they do to me. I'm too passionate about this. I'm excited about this. And I'm excited that I'm currently getting DM'd by people in Washington. This is amazing. Grant, anything, other, anything else you want to say about, about that or about this topic or anything else you want to say? I think we may have lost Grant. Let's go move on. Uh, let's go to who else do we have in the speaker? We have Jordan. Your hand is still raised. Uh, any 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 comment you had on that? Yeah, thanks, James. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of people need to really focus on is that this is a Republican um, staffer for an uh, intern for a Republican congressman who holds these beliefs that. You know, he loves Nancy Pelosi. He thinks Trump should die. And he even says like, oh, yeah, my boss knows about it, but he doesn't care. I I have my picture with Nancy Pelosi right there on my desk. So it really shows that this is a uniparty thing. And then it goes back to... um, What do you mean by uniparty, Jordan? I don't... It's kind of an inside term. You know, the swamp, the... The people that they're not actually there to represent their constituents. They're there to move with the Washington, D.C. machine, exactly how they are being, you know, led to do. I mean, by these sex parties, by the leadership within their party, they're they're not actually partisan people. They're just unified in one thing, and that's screwing over the American people. But one thing I want to point out, you know, I just dropped it in the chat below this post is three photos of. Titus Warren with Kevin McCarthy and that kind of brings to my head what role does Kevin McCarthy play in all this because Titus did reveal that it's the parties the leadership of the parties that's kind of running that's what he said yeah he said it was the leadership of the parties Kevin McCarthy Nancy Pelosi I wonder what he meant by that yeah exactly and if you remember that before Kevin McCarthy resigned from Congress and left you know when after he was removed as speaker with the motion to vacate, there was this big fight against the establishment rhinos and against the real conservatives to get a good speaker of the house. They wanted Jim Jordan, but McCarthy was behind the scenes pulling the strings. And I wonder 
How many of these Republicans? Oh, by, by the way, Jordan, some people the comments saying, James, you should know what a uniparty is. Now, I may know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm asking <laughs> because some people out there may not know what it is. I, I ask questions sometimes I think I know the answers to. Continue, Jordan. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, that's the thing. How, how much dirt did Kevin, does Kevin McCarthy have on current members of Congress to— Do, do you think, Jordan, that this it? young man might divulge more now that he's been put on blast? Like, as a, you're a reporter doing this, do you think— That'll make him pucker up even more, or it'll make. What's your prediction about the sources? You know, coming to full. You know, it kind of kind of depends on what happens to him. I feel like if if he gets ends up losing his job and never having an opportunity in D.C. again, he might. But again, it goes back to him wanting to keep buying this Louis Vuitton, him saving up for every weekend over the summer in the Hamptons. I think he's going to continue to do what he needs to do to climb the ranks in Washington, D.C. And if if that means, you know, going silent and kind of acting like it never happened, I think he'll do that. Um, but if, if he loses everything, I, I think he, there's a chance he might come forward. But, and maybe he'll come forward and, and say the name, and that's the importance of this. This is very exciting. Uh, someone said, James, just buy him the damn ring already. I did not buy him anything. We just went shopping, and he found this ring. He this Burberry bag. You know, one of the things, I have a theater background. So I, I've played terrorists, pimps. I've played drug dealers. I've played cowboys. It's sort of like what the actor said in Mad Men. Once you put on the the wardrobe, you get into your suit or you get into your um, aesthetic, you just, you just get into the role. You get into the zone. That's how I operate. So it's much more helpful to me to be in disguise, uh, just psychologically. I could play the role of anything. Uh, and of course, if you're if you're a citizen journalist listening to this, um, you know that's important for you to know because the the, the purpose of, of that is to get the story. It's to get the confession to to get the the, the, the content so that you could um, uh, uh, share it with the world. Um, and and in order to do that, you have to dig deep. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Let's go to Jack Lombardi. Uh, you got your hand raised. Your reaction to the DC blackmail news. Thanks for having me, James. First off, I'm not surprised whatsoever. I, we, you and I met CPAC a few years ago, and I even noticed and was invited to different after after uh, convention parties, and a, and a couple of them I chose not to go to, but I witnessed and watched uh, so many of these candidates and one sitting senator, we could talk about offline on that one, just get blasted drunk. So I'm not surprised that they would you know, their their integrity would drop and they would make foolish mistakes, not whatsoever. Even in Illinois politics, I watched people get blind drunk and I could see everyone kind of knowing everyone, everyone chummy, everyone wants to use everybody environment. So I'm not surprised whatsoever, James. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. We need more citizen journalists to put on the mask and go in there and, and get the story and get the confession because these people need to be exposed. And the reason why it's so important is because our policies and how it affects our taxes and our lives are, are dictated by these people's yes. immaturity. Yeah, I mean, it's just look at what the guy said in the tape, that the votes, they're not, they, they have suggested votes, meaning that they have, they had, he said he had a group chat. Titus said they have a group chat. Um, and we encourage people on Capitol Hill, if you are involved in this, you know, I, 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 can, I, can, I can't guarantee you that I can promise your anonymity until I talk to you. And, and, uh, and then I can promise you that once you have documentation that I verify. But come forward. Come forward with the group chat. I want to see the group chats. We want to see the, 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 the coercion in, at play. Titus says there's a group chat where they tell you who to vote for. And they don't give you any choice in the matter. And this is evil. A, a day national after... National security K issue. Kerry it's Lake, I mean, they were, you saw, did you see the recording of Kerry Lake for yesterday? Yes, that, and, and here we go. This is another play. And... It, the disappointing part is, is I've run as a Republican and I've been a strong Republican, but we have this degeneracy, you know, uh, just this cancer that's within the party that brave people like yourself and, and your citizen journalists are going to have to help us uproot the, the mega movement, the Make America 
uh, great again. The, the America First people are doing our best, but it's going to take brave people like yourself and those who you're working with to expose the scum and get this rot out well, of the Well, whoever recorded Party. the Carrie Lake deal in that room is also brave. And I know it probably wasn't easy for them to have uh, released that and, and quote unquote, burned the bridge. Um, this is James, the these are powerful people. These are powerful people. So 100% that was very brave. But now that powerful person is going to crumble. So you win. This is when the pen, or in your case, the microphone is mightier than the sword. The, the, the microphone, the, how about the, the, uh, the, the lapel pin camera is mightier than the sword. <laughs> um, but yes, that's a great point. Um, we're, yeah, we're in the top story on, on Gateway Pundit right now. This is the, the, the blackmail scheme exposed. Let's go to another speaker. Who do we have here? Uh, it's lined up. Let me just see what we got. I want to hear from more of you. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go to, did we hear from Corey yet? We have Corey and Jay. Corey, are you there? Hey, James. Hey, what's this your Corey reaction here. to all this? Uh, it, it's very interesting. It, it goes goes along the lines of what we're we're finding out here down in San Diego and with the border stuff, which is interesting because the Republicans and the government are involved in all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And Corey, you're you're a citizen journalist. Corey, I'm going to get back to you here. We're just finishing up this story. Stand by. We're finishing up this blackmail part one. So if I'm going to come back to you, uh, let's go to hold on one second. Uh, let's go back to Advocate. You had another comment. Advocate, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Um, watching the videos, it seems like videos keep coming out. Lots of evidence keeps coming out, but we don't see any change. What does change look like? How do we push through this? It seems like we've got swamp creatures everywhere, not just in the government, locally everywhere so what what does that change look like to you or to anybody well i mean you, you have two choices you can achieve your objectives through political coercion political coercion or you can achieve your objectives through informed consent so i i, I have to believe in the idea of informed consent in other words i think we have to build consensus we don't really actually agree you might agree you might already know like i i, I guarantee you this video doesn't surprise many people Please let me know. If, if anybody is, is surprised by this, please raise your hand. And no one will raise their hand because, I mean, it might be surprising the guy didn't recognize me and the guy sort of blabbed in a, like this, like he did. But a lot of people don't know this. I think that's what you guys need to re remember. Like, I don't think a lot of Americans, like, that aren't paying attention, I don't think they necessarily believe this. So I think we first have to inform the people. And the sunlight ne needs to be the disinfectant. The sunlight needs to expose what's happening. You know, and, and, I, and, I, and you might say, well, this is just one guy. Okay, well, let's go expose them all. And by the way, I'm not just puffing. I'm not just doing puffery. I will next week go to part two and then go to part three. And then suddenly you'll see thousands of people come out of the woodwork, okay? Thousands of people will come out of the woodwork, I promise you. And you would say, what is the, why does that matter? Well, it matters because the only reason that hasn't happened yet because they're afraid and they're going to get killed and they're going to get fired and they're not going to be able to pay their mortgage but if we all do it in unison they can't attack all of us does, does that make sense to you it does make sense i just want to i just don't know what that change looks well, like well i don't i'm not but the thing i'm like the only person that is not involved in that i'm not a pundit and i'm not a lawmaker there's actually over 400 of those people so I, I, that's just not my deal, and I'll never be a lawmaker. I never want to be a lawmaker. I never want. I never. I think it's the illusion of power. I think Congress has no power and is completely impotent, and there is a sclerosis in government. And solutions are completely beyond the governing process at this point. The Supreme Court's decision was not even respected. And by the way, I don't. I don't agree or disagree. It's just a fact. The law doesn't have any meaning anymore in this country. So knowledge is the actual power. Enlightenment is the only power. If enlightenment doesn't work, I don't know how to avoid civil unrest. The solution lies in the First Amendment. The solution lies in informing the people, as idealistic as that sounds. Um, you know, and speaking, and speaking quite personally, 
Um, I told Luke Radowski last night in Miami, uh, actually two nights ago, I said, challenging Leviathan itself is hard. Um, Leviathan doesn't like being challenged, okay? <laughs> um, but as nearly as impossible as that may be to, to, to challenge the United States government, or maybe as nearly as, I don't think it's impossible, I just think it's very difficult. The enemy and its injustice is no longer what bothers me. In other words, the FBI, the government, the, all of it, just Mark, whatever his name is, the head of the DHS, the, um, none of that, 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 that I, I understand that, okay? I understand DC sex parties and leverage, but the enemy cannot betray you. Only people you think are good can do that. Only the good guys can, can hurt you, really. This guy in this tape says, I work for Republicans, they can kiss my ass. I said, do you feel guilty helping out the Republicans even though you're a secret Democrat? He says, Donald can die. Donald needs to die is a direct quote from him. Only people that you think are supposed to be the good guys can, can betray you. And it's really been an indescribable hell for me to watch that and to see witness people go against everything they claim to believe in, just like this young man. Everything they claim to believe in, everything good and right in the service of money. He says, I just want the money so I can buy my Louis Vuitton handbags. This is what this guy in this tape says. And I've witnessed envy and destroy people, an unhealthy obsession with comfort and safety from good people inside the Border Patrol. And I think it's these weaknesses and these limitations that are what stand up, rather what stand between us and that which we are fighting. The enemy is not the enemy. The enemy is actually the good people who do nothing, okay? And it can all change in a second if people will stand the F up and, and, and record like I just did or like the person in the room with Kerry Lake and the chairman of the GOP did. Everything would change in a New York minute, okay? And, e and, and, and and every one of you can do this, and I and we will do it. But go ahead, go ahead. What, uh, for the evil that's going on, I see it as angels versus demons here. What if we brought in more God back into everything, back into our schools, back into everything? Start promoting more of a religious revolution. I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, I, it's, it's, I mean, all these things are sort of biblical principles. I mean, truth, beauty, goodness, light. I would call it light. Perfectly consistent with what you just said. Just it's it's all about light versus darkness. It's all about it's all about um, it's all about exposure. Coming back to this video, the leverage and the blackmail to influence how people vote. That is critical piece of information. For those of you just joining us, this is live radio. People come and they go. We have 7,300 people live. Um, this is about leverage to get votes. You get the you get the dirt on someone. This is what they do to lawmakers. And we hope to get more and in, in more information. Thank you, sir. Let's go to Florida, man. You're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Everyone, please repost and reshare this space. Right now, go to your ex and repost. Say, we're on. We're talking about... DC Swamp Exposed Part One, Capitol Hill individual. Go ahead, Florida man, you're live. Hey James, I wanna thank you for uh, bringing me up. I've been watching you for years and you are such an integral part of this movement, exposing the corruption and everything that happens in the deep state. And I just fear, uh, it's the same fear that you talk about with employees and people standing up to, to, you know, the powers that be, I just, I, what, what do you do to combat that fear? Because what, what, mean, what are you talking about a clearly, fear that you experience? What do you mean fear? What are you afraid of? Well, I mean, you, I mean, I don't know how you're, I, I don't know how you cannot fear them doing something to you. I mean, you. you what are, are they gonna? What are they gonna do to me? What, what's the problem? They're gonna kill me? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what these people are are capable of, especially like given like the the things that you're that you just exposed today. I mean, these are secrets that have been held for a millennia, if not longer, and you're literally on the internet posting about them. Well, I mean, like, I mean, so, I'm, I've lived a good life. I'm 39 years old. Whether my life is complete or not, it's not up to me. 
I yeah. mean, you guys. I mean, listen. You guys keep talking about Christianity. I mean, God. I mean, I'm and I'm I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm not really talking about it a lot, but like that. What? what I mean, <laughs> I just find it ironic that Christians are telling me I need to be afraid of death. I just, just, I just, I don't get it. Whether my life is complete or not is not up to me. What happens next, I do not know. If there's more to come, so be it. I'm going to expose the blackmail schemes, and next week it's going to get bigger because we're taking you beyond just this individual and we're going to go to people who work at the highest levels and we're going to expose that. And I've learned the pursuit of truth requires extreme risk while operating without a safety net. It is impossible for me to operate with an insurance policy. It's anathema to the concept of what I'm doing. I've experienced a lot and in fact, I think I've lived about 10 lives into one. By the way, I'm going to finish my thought, but we just got a tip from someone who says he was used as blackmail as a child. This is incredible. My team at OMG is DMing right now. Our, our lines are open. Our DMs are open. We're getting DMs. Uh, this is incredible. This is why we're doing this, because we're getting more sources, and they have nowhere else to go. But going back to your point, sir, uh, I think you asked something to the effect of, why am I not afraid? It is a strange question, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not afraid because um, I've lived a great life at 39 years old. I've been through a lot of things. And, um, you know, from my vantage point, what I, what I got to experience, which was a good upbringing, beautiful parents, balanced parents, hardworking people, who raised me with a work ethic and, and to believe the best in people, that is on the verge of extinction. And I built a good organization, uh, Veritas, from nothing, which did good things. And I know that now I'm building a better organization, having learned lessons from the first company. And I know that this organization will accomplish greater things. So, you know, I'm not suicidal, but I'm not afraid to die. Because I, at this point, I'm indifferent to the outcome and, and frankly, numb to the consequences. I've adapted to this whole idea of, of faith over fear. Um, and the mission is to discover people who actually have principles that are not for sale, who will do the right thing rather than talk about it. I'm sick and tired of people talking about it. I'm tired of seeing tens of thousands of people slide to my DMs and then complaining about how bad things are, and then they do nothing. I'm just tired of it. So here I stand, I can do no other. If they're gonna kill me, they're gonna kill me. Let's go to Jessica. You're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Go. Yeah, thanks so much, James. Um, you have really opened my eyes um, to speaking up and being open. Um, I know that a couple weeks back, I wasn't necessarily feeling comfortable about sharing information I've seen, but what you said is so important that if we all come together, if there's hundreds, if there's thousands of people reporting on this stuff, they can't come after everybody. And if they do, it, it, I just don't see that happening, but anything's yeah. possible. Yeah. It, it, it's like if they all collective, if they, if like the IBM people, if they all join in unison and organize together and come out, I don't think they could fire them all or hurt them all. It's not possible, you know? And I, and I get these are deeply philosophical, psychological, perhaps even spiritual, the oldest of, of, of principles that we're <laughs> suddenly talking about rather than the actual stories. Uh, and it's interesting that that happens so quickly. Um, and I'm not qualified to opine on spiritual and psycho psychological issues, but here we are in this country where everyone's just so damn afraid. Faith over fear. Um, let's go to Jay. Are you there, Jay? How's it going, James? Good, good. We're waiting for Carlos. Is Carlos in the room yet, staff? I'm talking to my team. Uh, let me know when Carlos is there. I'd love to know Carlos's reaction as someone who was in Congress. But go ahead, Jay, your reaction to this reporting and anything else you'd like to say. No, man, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. For those who don't know me, my name is Jason, uh, Jay Pendu, Jason Pena. I am on the Cultural Affairs Advisory Board in the city of Doral, Florida. Uh, what you would call the lowest rung of government, but, you know, hanging on by a moment. Um, it's not surprising. I mean, if, ever, <laughs> if anyone's watched a House of Cards episode, I mean, I hate to reduce it to that, but uh, maybe that's why they put that stuff out. So it's like normalized. I'm like, no, that's a TV show, right? Like if, you, if I tried to explain this to my anyone in my neighborhood, right, they'd be like, mm, that's great, but 
Yeah, right, right. Until you show them a video. That's right. Like, that's that's a really good point. Right. Really good point. <laughs> until you show them a video like this, so. I mean, have you done? Have you I, showed I them? And, have you showed them the videos, or, or what's your experience with that? Again, I mean, you can't deny what's right in front of you. You can't deny like James O'Keefe not mumbling. You know, like what at the gym, like dude, you weren't mumbling. It's pretty clear. Oh, with, with Cuban here. said that I was mumbling. I've never mumbled <laughs> a again, video in my life. Allegedly. Allegedly. But no, I mean. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> guy allegedly it's, saying. Well, yeah, there's you, know, like, you can hear it. It's clear. But I think that the more that we get involved, so I helped the campaign now, and then they won, and they put me on this advisory board, right? So it's just really about getting, and the only, I'll put it this way, like, I just knew the people that I was campaigning for, what their beliefs were, how they, what their voting record was, and it's about getting, like, you decide, you decide your own, like, level of involvement. So I would just, like, encourage everyone to, like, write it to their, like, you know, GOP or, or if you're, if you're liberal, I mean, if you believe in that kind of thing, whatever, it's fine. Write your, your, you know, the, the chairs of your state, the chairs of your county, you know, the committee men. The committee or maybe women, just stop, maybe Twitter. just stop get caring about politics and start exposing. Like if, how much money is going to be spent on this election? Billions? Why don't we spend money on citizen journalism? Let's go to Dr. Strange. I know that you're a parody account, but I'm interested in what you have to say. You got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Thank you so much, James. I really appreciate it. Uh, as I have been saying for a while, moral depravity of any nation will make the nation weak and lead to corruption. When we analyze things, our society is designed for the average American to lose inhibition. We're bombarded with thousands of advertisement, advertisements on a daily basis that influence, influences us to lose our inhibition and give in to our desires. The education system does not teach people discipline or basic financial management or financial literacy. We're pushed to live and spend beyond our means. The average American lives in a financial prison. The difference between the average American and a homeless person is a few paychecks. We've become entertainment junkies because everywhere around there's entertainment and we have no time because of that entertainment to look at the issues and get engaged and get involved. Thank and you, that's, sir. That's, Th thank you, sir. Uh, let's go to Wade. Wade. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Wade Sear. Go ahead. Your reaction to today's news. You're from Arizona, so uh, you're Generation Z. Uh, you're for Trump. Um, the Carrie Lake tape came out yesterday. Now we have this congressional aide coming out. What's your thoughts? Yeah, um, I actually had a question for you. So firstly, uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for allowing me to ask my question to speak. I really appreciate it. Um, so like you said, I'm a Gen Z conservative. I actually worked in Congress for a couple of years under Representative Paul Gosar from Arizona. Uh, during my time on Capitol Hill, I actually heard a lot about the corruption and weird immoral activity that takes oh, place. Oh, we'd like to hear it. Tell us. Yeah, for the purpose of uh, blackmail schemes. Um, by the way, James, thank you for all the amazing work you do. My question to you is... Um, how far do you think these strange parties and blackmail schemes and underground activities go? Do you think they stretch all the way to the executive branch inside the White House? And how often do you think they happen inside of our own party, if at all? Um, and what do you think is the best way to tell whether or not a politician or an aspiring politician truly is who they say they are? I think it's very difficult for any politician to win and, and, and keep their own soul. It's very difficult. It's, it's almost impossible. I don't know if it's possible. I mean, look, you know, I was raided by the FBI. They took my phones and they, and they had everything off my phone, which, of course, the intended effect was to provide a chilling effect for all of you because now you're afraid to message me. Now, luckily, I, I, I overcame that by continuing. But, but that process of just getting every little piece of dirt on you and then having control over you will destroy a man's soul. But take, don't, take it, don't take it from me. Listen to the source there talking about it there and saying, by the way, if you're just tuning in, repost the space. We are at almost 250 reposts, breaking news. We want people to come forward to speak up, just like this individual on the phone with us right now, live on the inside with James O'Keefe, uh, Wade in Arizona. Wade, what did you do on Capitol Hill? Um, well, I... Uh did videos and graphics just a lot of uh, digital media work for my representative um but it was interesting to see you know especially 
I was uh, very active on the Hill during the speakership battle in January. Um, it was very interesting to see some of the behaviors from, you know, certain representatives uh, who kind of felt like they were forced to vote certain ways. Um, I, I think it was. I think people should really go back. And hey, what what, did, what evidence do you what did what did you see to corroborate what Titus told us today that members were leveraged, coerced, blackmailed? Did you, what did you witness or hear? Um, well, it, it was, I mean, it was definitely a very uh, tumultuous time, but, uh, you know, I think, I think you can just go back and look at the behaviors of these representatives. Um, a lot of them were under a lot of stress, and it wasn't something that was typical of what you would expect for this kind of vote. Um, but... Nothing specifically that I could report, but I do think it is important that these are talked about, that this issue is talked about more. Um, I think we do need more transparency, especially on the Hill. Um, and well, so I mean, listen, I that Madison Cawthorn tried to tell us about these parties, but no one would listen. And he lost his seat for talking about it. And uh, he needs to be on this space, but I think, unfortunately, he cannot be. He said in the video, we talked to him, we recorded it. And he said in the video, uh, in this video, he gave us a reaction that, that, in fact, he was invited to one of these parties. Unbelievable. Let's go to Linda. Linda, you're live with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Hey, James. Hey, this is more of a warning to everybody. This isn't just starting uh, in Congress. I want to tell you all and warn anybody who works on a presidential campaign. This starts on the ground um, I've worked on a presidential campaign before, and I can tell you that they, if, if they if they plan on moving anybody, say, from a, a campaign into um, a position within their administration, they will try to um, get them in a compromising position. I've seen it, and the media is around. Uh, 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 picture this. You're, you're, it's been a long day. You're working on a campaign. You're on your feet all day. You go to the hotel. You're sitting in the lobby and you're having a couple of drinks with people. And all of a sudden, some people end up in a room with some other people and things happen. And then they got gotcha. you. Well, thank you for the, thank you for that. Um, Jordan, you got your hand up back to you. We're going to finish up talking about this video. If you're just listening, please repost the space. We're about to get back to the border with Chris and Corey on the border, talking about what's happening down there. And we're obviously still reporting on that, but go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, you know, one thing that I wanna add, this goes back to what Wade was saying. How do we know if someone's going to do the right thing in Congress or in the Senate? I, I just wanna point out this Carrie Lake audio in the audio, she said, they're going to have to effing kill me to stop me. And then when Jeff DeWitt told her to name her price, um, she said, I won't take 10 million, not 20 million, not 30 million, not even a billion dollars. This is about saving our country. And the fact that she put that audio out there, that I, to me, that just shows she is going to be a good senator. Yeah, I mean, that must have been tough for her because she had to, or someone had to, uh, burn a bridge, I guess, with this person. I can't. I can't imagine that would have been an easy decision for anybody to decide. I, I've, I'm talking to people right now, and I'm texting. They're like, I don't want to name the person. You know, they don't want to. They don't want to name them. Um, so we're trying to get those names to come out and verify what's going on. This is this is just like a disinfectant, isn't it? It's just sunlight is just cleaning it all up like vampires in the sun. Um, okay, we got one one or two more. Uh, this is. I don't know where you guys come up with these names. Real Queen Matt Meat Girl? <laughs> Your hand is raised. You're live with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Okay, trying to come off mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're live. Go ahead. Okay. It's an honor, James, to speak with you. And I want to say the 10th Alex Jones and Bohemian Grove, none of this. It's a shocker, but at the same time, the Fed is corrupt, the DOJ is corrupt. What I want to say is, we're at an Overton window moment in the war. This is a 
severe moment between OMG Media, InfoWars, and TCN, Tucker Carlson's new network. We can do big things. We can expose the deep state like never before. We can take over the job of the DOJ and the FBI investigating. I've always found Project Veritas to be better than the FBI at investigating. So salute to you. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right, uh, let's go to one more person. Um, I'm, I'm texting back and forth with Carrie Lake right now, everyone. She's unfortunately, she's on an airplane. Uh, but she would love to come on and talk about this DC blackmail. She she's the uh, going through that thing in in Arizona. Let's go to Andrew. Andrew Wilheimer, you're live with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Your reaction to all this, James. Uh, you're obviously my hero. The the work that you do, the risks you take, the liability that you that you um, put up with, it's it's absolutely admirable. My, my only message that I have right now is that we need to uh, pressure Elon to keep this space open for citizen journalists and people putting their time in to this platform because, you know, we're all here because his commitment to a free, you know, free, fair speech. Um, and, and there's a lot, there's millions of people that really feel like they're being censored and, uh, you know, basically diminished on this platform. How, so do, how, are, people, uh, how are people being censored? Uh, uh, Elon co follows a lot of our stories. What, what are some examples of that? Well, a lot of the small people, they don't get the plays, they don't get the views. They're, they're, they're getting only 1% of their followers uh, mm -hmm. in viewership. If you take the, you know, how many uh, followers they have, let's say they have 100 followers, they get one, two people, they're getting one, two percent of your followers seeing your views. So there's a lot of complaints across the board, but um, we really appreciate what Elon's doing. Obviously he's making a big impact and, and he's given a platform, but we just need to keep that you know trend going upwards. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll land it there, James, thank you. Thank you. People saying this is the least surprising video they've ever seen. I don't, I don't know if anything would ever surprise any of you, by the way. That's the, the question of the day is, what would surprise you? <laughs> If you're in the comment section on YouTube, or we'll type in a, a video that we could release that will that will shock you. I, I doubt that you guys are ever going to be able to come. That's going to make your mind explode with that question. What would surprise you? That's the question of the day. Um, okay, uh, 7,500 people live. Video is out. Video is going viral. Video's got you know millions of views already across the platforms. It's on all the platforms. We are going to go back to the border. We're waiting for, um, we are waiting for uh, George Santos to join us, but let's go back to the border for a minute and let's go back to um, Anthony from Muckraker. Are you there? Yes, sir. Thank you for your patience. Um, I, I just want to talk to you for a moment about courage because you, you, for those of you who did not hear in the beginning, Anthony, was kidnapped by the cartel. Anthony, people on this program are asking me if I fear for my life. Why don't I fear for my life? And all those sorts of questions are very hard to answer. What is your answer to that as someone who snuck from South America into the United States, riding along with the cartel and getting kidnapped? How do you answer that question? Yeah. Um you know, uh, I've answered that question a couple of times. I think part of it is you have to ask what your priorities are. You know, if you're prioritizing just living this life in the moment and material comfort, similar to that man in that video who's saving up for what was it, the Louis Vuitton bag and a vacation on the Hamptons, then I suppose you're not the person that's going to go out and do what you're doing or, you know, do what I did going from South America to the U.S. and that type of stuff. Uh, but if you're somebody that who holds the ideal of, you know, a free nation state, uh, uh, the ideals of not having a totalitarian government that's running everything where they have underground sex parties and then uh, hold that over the heads of elected representatives that are supposed to represent the people. You know, these types of things, that bothers you and that's something that you want to fight against. And I don't think that death really phases you because you realize that there are ideals that are much bigger than you know, your life here on this earth. And you need to ask yourself, you know, when I have children and my children's children come onto this earth and I'm inevitably on my deathbed, what's really gonna count? And is it gonna be this money that I amassed? Is it gonna be my material comforts or is it gonna be what I actually did? And honestly, if you really answer that, no matter who you are, it's always the latter. It's what you actually did and whether or not you had the cojones, right? The, the patriotic balls 
to actually stand up and fight for something. That's really all. But, I mean, I mean, a- Anthony, this is really the issue because I, I mean, everyone says what you say, but no one does what you do. All the people listening here probably believe in the same principles. But 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 you have managed to actually you got kidnapped by the cartel and I by the way I hope we work together uh, at, in some capacity because I, I know how hard what you what you did is and what you do is um, but you're actually out there doing it and and most people um, they all care about the country but they're just they're just shaken by this fear so walk people through how you were able to make that choice of, I guess, your, your, is it your passion? Is it your, um, uh, the principles that dri- dri- drove you so much? Did you ignore the fear? Do you disregard the fear? How do you do that? Well, uh, I mean, I will be honest with you. I think that it's hard to do anything if you don't truly love it, right? I, it's just like if you're getting up every day and going to a job that you hate, that is going to be the worst eight hours of your life. That's going to be the worst five days a week of your life. You're just going to be longing for the weekend to come. But if you're doing something you love, you know, you can't wait for it and time flies. So that's part of it. And I will say I do love uh, an adventure. I do love getting my adrenaline up. And, you know, that, that is part of it. So I'm not going to lie about that. But also the other part of it is, um, you know, I, I don't really want to repeat myself. But I and I don't want to try to sound like somebody where I'm making uh, I'm making all these high ranking claims. Oh, I'd, like like I'm some self selfless person. Oh, I did this for the country. But I truly um, fear for this country, and I fear what's going to happen to this country if this continues. Uh, the border situation that is continues for another you know five years or ten years or I mean twenty years. The country's gone. Let's not even talk about it. Um, I truly fear what that'll look like, and so I guess I selfishly. Um, am doing this because I do not want to live in that world. And so, in my opinion, just to close it off, um, if you want to see something done right, you need to do it yourself. I've always lived by that. And I didn't see anybody that was actually exposing the whole freaking path. So I thought, you know, who better than myself if nobody else is going to do it? And so I just decided to make it happen. And that's really the whole thought process. Right I mean, is, there. That, is that a God thing? Is that your your father, how he raised you? Is you you're, you're, you're just... You're just uh, tunnel visioned passion for doing the deed. I, I just, that that's what we're trying to get to here in convincing other people to do likewise. Yeah, I, I guess, to be honest with you, there was a point in my life, man, I, sometime when I was a teenager, I realized in this life, you need to be willing to undertake things alone, right? You can never count truly on other people. And I'm not saying you shouldn't trust other people. I'm not saying you should be some sort of loner. But what I'm saying is you need to be willing to do things alone, anything in life. You need to always assume, okay, is this something that I'm willing to undertake alone? And if it's not, you need to figure that out because right, you, you can't go throughout your life just relying on other people and waiting for another person to do it or be alongside you. And, you know, with that mentality, um, I think that that's helped me a lot just in life because, you know, for example, this, I was, uh, you know, I was willing to just go ahead and do it. And granted, my brother decided to come with me, uh, which was a good thing because honestly, there's a very high percentage chance I would have just died along this route if he didn't come with me. Um, extremely dangerous. It's exponentially harder to take out two people at once than one person. But I would have—I was prepared to do it alone, right? Um, and I think that that's something that people need to basically come to grips with. Understand that there's power in the individual, and you need to be able to do things alone. And you have to basically come to come to terms with that. Um, Anthony, um, we're talking to Anthony from Muck Raker. You know that I love that word because that's the name of the book I wrote. I, I didn't choose that name as my organization, Anthony, because I was told by a lot of people I, they couldn't even say the word. What is that, a muckracker? What the heck? So kudos to you for actually choosing the word as your, as your domain and as your trademark. Um, thank you. Thank you, Anthony, for joining us. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you offline. I'm sure that you and I are going to work together on a project or two. You, I, I admire what you did. And someone needed to do it, snucking, sneaking all the way from South America to the Mexican border. Thank you, Anthony. Back to you, Nick. Just a couple minutes, Nick. Thank you for waiting. And then we're going to go to Corey on the border there. Um, I'm going back to the border very soon to bust open some child trafficking rings and some other things occurring on the border. Nick. Um, if, are you still there, Nick Shirley? Yes, I'm right here. I mean, what's your reaction to this? What Anthony at Muckraker just said about you, because you infiltrated the what was happening in New York. It, how do you overcome the fear, and what's your thought on that? Well, I think overall, just like he knows, people need to know what's going on, and so you realize your risk is high, but the reward and what people need to see is much higher, because it, it's really crazy what's happening here in America and what's happening to millions of people across the world. It's the biggest human trafficking that the world has ever seen is happening right now, and nobody even talks about it. 
Um, Nick, um, you and I are going to talk to each other down there. I will see you down there offline. Um, anything else you want to say about your citizen reporting? Because you're doing some of the best citizen journalism on the border I've seen for someone with just a bunch of brass balls and an almost zero budget. What's your secret? How are you able to get these stories? Well, how are you so successful? Did you go to journalism school? No, I, I've been doing YouTube for the past five years, and then I just barely came home from living in South America for two years, and uh, this uh, immigration has been something I've been fascinated with for the past three years. So is so, it your ability no, to speak Espanol? Is it your passion? What is the, the, the technique that you, you use to be so effective as a citizen journalist? Yeah, I think just uh, my ability to speak Spanish, uh, I, there's very few people that can do it, and I can gain trust with Latinos and, and others so quickly that people are really easy to, really willing to open up and, and talk about what's going on. All right. Well, thank you, Nick. I'll talk to you offline. Okay. Let's now go to, well, first of all, before you, send us your tips, reach out to a signal. If you're a, if you're a Mexican American, if you're a Spanish speaking citizen journalist, we're going to put you to work in California, Arizona, and Texas. We're just tasking people at OMG. We're going to create an army of citizen journalists, likes of which you'll never believe. Let's go to Corey and Chris who are together. Um, uh, are you guys still there? Corey and Chris. Hey James, we're here. We're, we're separate, but together we're here in San Diego. Thank you guys. And I'm you're on. You. And, um, if you, if you can just tell the world what you're reporting on there in California, we're going, we're about to get to those camps in Southern California and give everyone a summary of what you've seen. These guys have been covering the San Diego border for the last two months. Corey background is an army veteran. Chris was a Marine veteran. Both are disabled veterans who care deeply about the country. Um, what have you seen over there? You've been doing in hidden camera work, investigative work. Tell the world what you've seen. So, James, we, we are finding out that these, these NGOs or non-government organizations are, are making a ton of money off of this whole illegal immigration system. And, and one thing we need to bring up is people. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. People need, All right, people need uh, Corey, I think they, they're not able to hear you. We're in two separate areas. Um, yeah, thanks, Mr. O'Keefe, for having us on. Um, so um, a lot of the things that's going down over here in San Diego, obviously there's border crises everywhere, right? But I think every state has their own very specific thing that's going on and how it affects the specific location you live in, right? Well, the N NGOs that we see, um, the charter buses we followed, all the way up to the airport and back, the uh, decommissioned Ramada inns that have now been turned into the migrant uh, facilities for, for kids and family members. Um, Jewish Family Services seems to be the, the heavy hitter down here in our area. Uh, Corey and I have both frequent the border. We go there at night with optics. We're watching these people in the dark, watching what they're doing. They're not able to see us. And it's just, it's very eye-opening to see it in real life, right? So, you see it on the news. You see it so, what do you think? The, what do you think the secret thing that needs to be exposed down there in San Diego? Like, what's the mission going down there? Citizen journalist on the hunt. What do they need to know? The, the biggest thing that we've we've uncovered is how much money these NGOs are making. So, as they're five hundred one c threes, so they're they're tax deductible. Are you guys able to hear Corey? Yeah, we can hear him. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. And. Uh, they so they're making a ton of money off of this and like chris said jewish family services is, is one of them and like in the your previous videos um when you ask who they're working for if we go to these the like the ramada inn in mission valley and we ask what's going on because the it's gated and there's there's uh, privacy fencing around the whole the whole hotel they won't talk about it they won't answer your questions they won't tell you anything even the people driving the buses, uh, someone finally told me that they were working for Jewish Family Services. And then if you pull their financials from two years ago, their uh, total, total support and revenue are $103 million, which is just insane to me. Well, we got so many NGOs. One more question before we get to George Santos, who's now finally joined us with just 15 minutes left to go. Um, uh, guys, what... Um, those those documents that you pictures of of all the shredded up passports and, and documents what, what is that about what's the story there on the border so james um we found probably over a hundred passports um 
and Im- uh, Mexican immigration IDs, uh, a few phones. Um, we've cataloged it, put it on the wall, and we've got a couple of leads. We were able to unlock one of the iPhones, and we've attempted to uh, connect with this individual. Uh, we have a phone with his entire trip, um, and it's just it's it, you just go out there, it's just littered. And we're hoping that we can get some more information regarding this person. We're seeing their Twitter account and stuff that they're looking at. It's very interesting to see what, what story they might have. Well, guys, okay, thank you for your, your courage. And um, I'm going to come down there and help you, I promise, in February. Thank you for joining us and telling the world what you've seen. Now we have Mr. George Santos on the line to react to the story, the video. Uh, George Santos Expelled New York Republican Congressman says Capitol Hill is a wash in debauchery and blackmail. Question, George, are you there? I'm here, James, and I'm sorry about being so late. Uh, flying to Dallas had some, uh, when we landed, we had some issues, but finally managed to make it. Sorry, it's the tail end of it, but uh, I don't think I need a lot of time to say what I have to George, say. George, have so. you seen this clip? Have you seen any part of this video that's been released just now? So I saw I saw bits and pieces, and what I can say um, is very simple, James. To the to the extent of extortion in Capitol Hill, extortion is the currency. And here's I'm going to tell you my story of extortion and blackmail in Capitol Hill. All right, we're ready. I got, all right, so I get elected November eighth. The New York Times article comes out about me on December nineteenth. And we're on Capitol Hill January 3rd to vote. I, at first glance, went to Washington, D.C. with no intention to vote for Kevin McCarthy for speaker. He had not helped me. I had been shafted by people within his orbit. This was a kind of a known secret, right? The moment I set foot in Washington, D.C., my phone calls and my everything starts ringing and everyone around me starts saying, you have to vote for Kevin or else they're not going to seat you. I was forced at that point in time to vote for Kevin McCarthy 15 times because I was threatened to not be seated. And there's precedent to not seat a member of Congress, right? It's happened to a former New York Democrat uh, a couple of decades ago. There is precedent. I was told either you vote this way or you will not be seated. So the the leverage was not seating you as a member of Congress. There wasn't any sexy blackmail party business. You didn't. there was no there was no blackmail left to put out right the new york times had already done that so now the next step up was we won't seat you now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be a hypocrite here and say that i didn't eventually grow fond and work well with the speaker and quite frankly while he was speaker i didn't get expelled and i was afforded due process the moment he was removed i was not afforded due process but george so, george, it, george it, you know like, one thing that's remarkable answer. just let me just reset for audience because we have live people we have a million views on our spaces today um uh, if you're just joining us, you're listening to former Congressman George Santos reacting to the D.C. Swamp Part 1 blackmail tape featuring the young man talking about sex parties. They leverage votes against people. George, you mentioned something that the media kind of aired all of your dirty laundry. And, and, and I find that they don't do that with other members of Congress who have dirty laundry to the extent you do or, or different or worse. Why is that? Hey, George, you're still well, with look, us. I'll give an example. Yeah, go Congressman ahead. Nick Lowe. I'm go ahead. here. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I'll give you an example, James. Congressman Nick Lolota from New York's first district. I gave the media multiple leads on a lot of corruption and theft of public funds that are alleged against him. Nobody in the media. And I went from the Daily Beast to the New York Times and everything in between that spectrum. And the answer I always keep getting in return is we don't have the resources or time. Here's why, James. My case was not an investigation. They didn't have the resources. They were handed my vulnerability study by a disgruntled former consultant who was bitter I won and he was no longer part of the honeypot. So he said, fuck it, let's go ahead and blow it up. So he gave it to the New York Times. And when the New York Times decided not to publish the entirety of the actual document, they he went ahead and did it again and gave it to CBS 
in the guises of you have to publish it. So blackmail comes from the establishment. Blackmail comes from consultants. Blackmail comes from fellow members of Congresses that are chairs and committees. Well, let me get this straight. Hold on. They said the New York, the news media said they don't have the time and resources to investigate and publish these things. Is that what they said to you? That's literally what I've been told by some of the most vitriolic journalists. Now, what's there. the real like, reason? The that, reason. That, that doesn't make any sense. If it's true, there's well, dirty... I, I have a theory. Okay, what's your theory? The theory is there's a select group of members of Congress in Washington, D.C. that are not to be touched because those are the yes men to leadership. They will never buck leadership. They will never vote against leadership in any real uh, 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 way that would really hurt them. George, like, can I you can you up. name any names? I'm. Everyone's asking for names. I've all of this, this. Even this guy in this tape says just, he's going to take it to the grave. Just look, just look at the names. It's it's just look at the voting records. You'll never see dirt on the entire New York delegation of vulnerables, from Nick Lalota to Mike Lawler to Anthony D'Esposito, Brandon Williams. I mean, uh, uh, Mark Molinaro, and Mark Molinaro is a great subject here. The man's been in public service and an elected official since he's 18. Then you have Nicole Maliotakis, who is clearly, clearly. Uh, have you been in, hey, George, have you been invited to any uh, sex parties while you were a member of Congress? I, I was not invited to sex parties, but members of my staff. This is one of the first things I was told when I got elected and I was with my staff. One staffer comes up to me and says, sir, you just got to be careful to not give your key to see, to junior staffers and to interns because there's sex parties and orgies that take place in the offices, in the office building on the weekends at, and at late nights. What about leveraging? What about my, voting? They're telling group chats, telling you who to vote for. Is that leverage, if the staff is, is engaged in the sex parties, does that leverage translate to the members the staff works for? These are not co members of Congress, but their staff. Absolutely. Let me put it this way. In Congress, very few members actually vote with their knowledge. They rely solely and squarely on their staff recommendations. If you pay attention to when we're on the floor voting, a lot of members have a piece of paper or a binder or something. They're looking at it before they vote. That's what their staff recommendations are. And a lot of time, I would get staff recommendations like everyone else. It's their job. My, le my, le my legislative director would issue them. I, and we would laugh about it because I would vote almost 100% contrary to recommendations. Right. Tell because us, tell us the why. I mean, so the staffer was the staffers were engaged in these sort of sexual orgies. We've heard drugs, alcohol, um, have you, have, and the and the and the members of Congress did did they did they know that that was occurring? Because that's bad. They're bad bosses if they let that stuff happen under their employ. Here's the deal. It's my understanding that it's an open secret. Members pretend to not see what's in front of them in lieu of not literally having to empty and terminate an entire office. I mean, if you were to fire on Capitol Hill today based on m sexual conduct on Capitol Hill within the halls of Congress, you would probably vacate that building. Can you and name that's, any that's other an can you name any other names? Uh, did you see anything that actually bothered you? Did you witness this? Did you did you did you they can't get to you anymore. I, 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 so just tell us so, the truth. I've never witnessed any sexual encounter on Capitol Hill myself, so I can't speak in first person. I have a staffer who we have this thing in the basement, and I was the first one to bring attention to the cages. Nobody talks about the cages, and I know that the name, it's almost like a pun, right? You said cages? The cages are essentially, yes, the cages are storage units in the basement of, the, of each house office building. In my case, the Longworth House office building is where my cage was. My One of my staffers, I can't say staff names because it kind of docks them and puts them in a bad light. They're this is where you and I jobs. might disagree. I might, but I'm not going to get you to do that. But the I, world wants I, you to. I'll say this to you, James. I'm comfortable in giving you the staffer's name and letting you go to work on that on a private channel, but I don't know that it's appropriate for me to- I mean, my opinion is all of Congress and their staff needs to be fired and whoever gets hired, they need to be fired too, but you're not willing to name the names um, 
people want it's you to name the names. Staffer. What's that? It's, 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 it's one staffer who would tell me all this because he was plugged in. He had, you know what? He had, it's not hard to figure out. I won't say the name, but well, I'll tell, let you tell us about the cages. People. Tell us about, finish it's the cool. story about the cages. The staffer had worked for Madison Cawthorn and then subsequently also worked for me. So it's not hard to know who the staffer is if you're plugged in with all of this stuff. Um, as far as the cages go, the first thing he tells me is like, sir, the cages are a problem because member staff are going down there to have sex. And then he literally was invited by some random person he was talking to on a hookup app or whatever, if they wanted to hook up in the cages. And he was just like, absolutely not. Right. So he even told me he had the decency to tell me this is literally how common it is that I was solicited to go have a hookup in the cages. And I brought that up to the House Sergeant at Arms and the House Admin Committee, which is chaired by... Um, What's his name? Brian Style from Wisconsin. And I said, I think we need to install cameras in the cages because it's becoming a fucking uh, orgy hotspot. And this is a massive liability. And what I was met with was uh, it's not a pressing matter or a, a large issue. Uh, and it doesn't warrant the, the resources. I guess it would be too expensive. And in short words, it would be too expensive to put cameras there to monitor the, the behavior. So they just kind of dismissed it. Hmm. Uh, Nate, you, get, you pretty much gave us the name. I will find it. This is the individual who worked for both Madison and you. Um, how, how, George, uh, we only got a couple minutes left. Thank you for, for, for joining us uh, here. How do we get to the bottom of this? Like we, we got this one guy to, to sing like a bird. This is a kid who's now been invited to work at, at, for the White House CHIPS program. He worked for Republicans. Um, and, and he's sort of saying he's a secret Democrat, loves Nancy Pelosi. This is in the video we just released. How do we get to the bottom of this story to expose more blackmail in D.C.? Look, it's simple. All you need to do is find the staffers who hold the keys to the votes in Washington, D.C., and they and if you can get them to sing, it's usually you're looking at your legislative directors. Uh, so that is the real big key. Those are the real power holders in Washington, D.C. It's the chief of staffs and the legislative directors who are literally in bed with everyone and everything around them. And they're the ones wielding power and making voting recommendations to their members. So if, if there's anybody you guys should be ta tapping into is trying to get a hold of as many legislative directors as humanly possible, especially active ones with with um, with um, uh, uh, members who are chairs of committees. Those are the ones who kind of send out the marching orders and kind of put the in a in a crude way. I'd say it this way: they're the ones who put the the the, the bounty out for what's the cost of a vote or whatever, and everyone knows what the costs and consequences are. So they kind of fall in line and try to make their members fall in line so they don't have any consequences. All right. Thank you, George, for joining us. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, Jake. Um, we've got we got one minute left. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, we are finishing up um, here on, on the Inside with James O'Keefe, Part 1, D.C. Swamp Exposed, Part 1, D.C. Blackmail, Capitol Hill Intern Reveals, Members of Congress Coerced to Vote a Certain Way, Quote, Madison Cawthorn wasn't lying neither, unquote, says the individual who says he wants, quote, Donald to die. Trump needs to die, unquote. He's a secret Democrat working for the Republican Party in Congress. Uh, he says that he knows and hears and sees, just like Santos alluded to, staffers having orgies, going to sex parties, group chats. He's a legal aid, legislative aide. He sees group chats where they're telling them who to vote for using blackmail. I ask him, do you feel guilty? And the congressional, the young man says, no, I don't feel guilty as long as I make my money and buy my Louis Vuitton bags. I proceed to go shopping with him at Burberry. This is all in the video. And in the, and in the Burberry store and the David Yerman store, while we're ring shopping, I did not buy him anything. We were just perusing. Uh, the young guy tells me, Titus tells me that he's preparing policy work and Biden's schedule the following day with CIA redactions. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a metaphor, an allegory for the, the, the immorality, the nihilism, the complete lack of any moral compass whatsoever 
in our nation's capital. None of this shocks any of you, but what matters is that we're getting it on videotape because people need to see. People need to see. Just like the three-letter agency people watching me right now, scared of what we might uncover next. Now, finally, I will hint what's being uncovered next. People DMing me, I said, what would shock you? So I'm looking at all the answers. What's, what would actually surprise you? And someone said, well, James O'Keefe, I'm, I was actually surprised that he didn't recognize you, but you'd never be able to get someone in the Biden administration to, 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 to fall into your trap and meet with you. Well, well, stay tuned.